Alright, I'm redoing my basket weave because too many people said that they hated the music or it was too loud or whatever. This is just a piece of scrap leather. I did a floral design on it and I didn't quite like how it turned out, so it's going to be used for stuff. <laughs> First off, take your wing dividers, scribe yourself a nice clear border. Don't worry, the lines will be covered by your border stamp if you do it right. So now we've got a nice clean border. Take yourself a ruler. Some people like to go like that. I don't. I like my basket weave to go side to side. It seems nicer to me. Scribe a line. Cool. So we've got our line scribed. We've got our border set. This is a pretty big basket weave stamp. I bought it from Clay Miller and I like it and I like clay. Using my little Barry King mall. Now we're going to start on this line and actually I'm going to start this backwards so that you can see. I'm in that line all the way, corner down to the corner. Now I'm going to start and then rotate it in. So you get that rotation and you don't go over your scribe line. Now on your second one, you want to bring the tip right up into that. Don't go over your vertical line, but come in as close as you can. That sets your layout. If you overstep it or space it too much, it either looks like someone, whoever wove it was, uh, you know, going a little bit too hard. And if you space out too much, then the dude was high. Now we're going to just carry it all the way up our scribe line. And here, just get it in there. Do not go over your scribes. If you go over your scribes on the corners, whenever you go through and put your border stamps on, it'll look like crap. Just made myself a little tick mark right there with the very tip of this. That way I can line up. As you can see, tilt your tool, light pressure, don't wail on it right there, or do, it won't look right, but you can, I guess. Huh. Closed on Sundays, dum dums.
All right, one half done. Don't worry, I'm fast. You don't have to go that fast. I'm just doing it fast for video's sake. All right, so we're gonna do the other side. Just turn it around. Don't try to do it to where you're like, Ugh, I can't see shit. That's not right. Don't do it that way. Make sure you can see it. You want to angle it toward the um, back of the tool where you're setting in the line is facing you so you can see. And time to pop the thumbs. When you're doing basket weave, you have to hold the tool so tight that you'll th your thumbs will start to hurt. Now I'm doing this today on a little one foot by one foot piece of granite that I got from Tandy. Usually I have a, a three foot by eight foot slab of granite on a countertop in my shop that I use for tooling, tool big pieces. No big deal. I can move them around and I don't have to tool weird. But that being said, it's kind of hard to get a camera onto that workspace without it jumping around like crazy or being in my way. So, videos are on my main work table. My work table, it's two sheets of three quarter inch plywood for the top, screwed together, and then two by sixes for my runners and four by fours for the legs. Roll of thumb, the heavier your work table is, the better your tooling surface will be. You don't want it to jump around and under this piece of granite I have a piece of rubber to take all the extra shock. You can get it at Tractor Supply for like $4 a linear foot and it's three feet wide. Makes it a lot easier. Also for granite, or the wise, go to a countertop shop and ask them if you can look through their extra pieces, because they'll do a countertop drop job, and you know those slabs are usually eight feet by twelve feet that they're cutting into countertops. They have a lot left over, and they can't really use it. They'll sell it to you super cheap. I got mine for my three foot by eight foot section was thirty dollars and I didn't even know the guy so it wasn't a buddy buddy thing All right, so we're done with our basket weave stamp. Yes, it looks kind of weird at the edges. If you've never done it before, this is what it's supposed to look like before you put your border on. Border tools. This is my favorite border tool. It's not Tandy, it's real leather. You buy them at Hobby Lobby, they come in packs of like five tools for 12 bucks. And um, it's just my favorite. Now when you do a border tool, start in your corners. Always start in the corner. Don't start in the middle. And what you do is you do this. Come over three or four. 
don't go to the middle but three or four and then come from the other side that way if that line is not exactly the right length you need for that border tool to fit perfectly you can overlap and it's not noticeable if it's in the corner or in the middle it's noticeable See it overlap just a hair right there, but you can't really notice it. And on your scribe line, if you can see this, you want the scribe line to be a hair into the scope of the tool. You know, into the inside curve, you want to see it. You want your tips to come down a little bit over, and that gets rid of that scribe line. See, it's off center. It's not super noticeable. Check who's bugging me now. Alrighty, so that's your border, that's your basket weave. That's all there is to it. I'm not gonna bother with these right now. I've got stuff to go do. But that shows you how to do it basically. I'll go through and do a die job later.